In this video, I thought I would give you all a look inside our book, Kyoto, A Literary Guide, and perhaps read a couple of my favourite poems. On the cover, you can see a wonderful photograph of the Biodo Inn by Patrick Viertala. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And if we open up the book to the table of contents, and then focus in on those contents, you can see that each chapter is arranged according to historical period. So we begin with the Heian period, which began in 794, the year that Kyoto was established as the imperial capital, and then it goes all the way up to the post-Meiji era and the present day. So this book is arranged chronologically. Now, if we look at the first chapter, each chapter begins with a short introduction which sets historical context. And each one of the selected pieces, whether it's a prose passage like this one on the left, or a piece of poetry like this one on the right, comes with the original text in Japanese, a transcription of the Japanese in Romaji, a translation into English, of course, and a footnote which provides some biographical details and perhaps some other information which can help to deepen your appreciation. And of course we have these wonderful illustrations. Now when I was helping to put this book together, I did not imagine that our book, our little book, would turn out to look quite as wonderful and as beautiful as it does. It's really quite something, as you can see. Now, I thought I would read a couple of my favourite Heian era poems to give you a taste of the book's contents. So, I may read more at a later date, but for now, here is Kino Tsurayuki. Kino Tsurayuki was a uh, high-ranking courtier, a principal compiler of the Kokin Wakushu, and also was named as one of the 36 immortals. And my wife Mew is going to read the Japanese first, and then I'm going to read the English. Mew. Ume no hana, niyou harume wa kurabu yama. Yami ni koyuredo shirukuzo arikeru. Scent of plum blossom in springtime. Even in the dark, crossing Mount Kurabu, I know the tree is here. The next poem is by the wandering monk Saigyo Hoshi. And he lived from 1118 to 1190. And it's this one. Nakiato Tareto Shiranedo Toribeyama Ono no Sugoki Tsukamo Yugure. Whose remains are buried here, I do not know, but one by one they unnerve me. Graves of Mount Toribe at twilight. At one final point, if we could show the whole book again. One final point is that recently I have published Deep Kyoto Walks the Paperback. Now these actually make very good companion volumes because this one, Kyoto a Literary Guide, is mostly poetry but not entirely. Whereas this one, Deep Kyoto Walks, is mostly prose but not entirely. Now if we look inside Deep Kyoto Walks, you can see it has some very nice illustrations, black and white. If you get the Kindle, you can get those in colour. And a host of Deep Kyoto Walkers in the contents, which includes Robert Yellen, Pico Ayer, Chris Rothorn, John Dougal, John Ashburn, and many more. So that's Deep Kyoto Walkers. As you can see, it says not for resale here. That's because this is actually a proof copy. But other than that, this is exactly what you would get if you ordered it from Amazon. It has this wonderful 
painting by Sarah Breyer called Blue Kyoto on the front cover. On the back cover you have a print by Richard Steiner which represents burning daimonji and that one is now available from Amazon. This is also available from Amazon and that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you got something out of it. Check the links below this video to order your copies. Kyoto a Literary Guide published by Camphor Press and Deep Kyoto Walks published by me.